In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds. We forever thank Almighty God, Allah, for coming as it was written and prophesied that he would come to seek and to save that which was lost. And we can find no other people Fitting the description of the lost brother, the lost sister, the lost sheep, except we, the 50 million or more mentally and spiritually dead black men and black women here in the hells of North America. And so we thank him for coming in the person of Master Farad Muhammad and raising up his messenger and his messiah the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and we thank the two of them for the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan and their names I greet you with the greeting words of peace assalamu alaikum hotep free to land on the move shalom What's up? <laughs> it is indeed my honor and privilege to be back home again with the UAM, the United African Movement family, here at the Slave Theater, where slaves are struggling and striving and straining to get free. Free from mental bondage, free from moral bondage, free from spiritual bondage, and indeed free from physical bondage. I have many, many feelings and many mixed feelings, as I guess it has been recently each time that I have come before you. I cannot stand in front of you and not speak of the Million Man March, October 16th, Monday, where close to two million black men converged on the capital of the United Snakes of America and ran the president out of town. ran the cracker out of town, shut the Congress down. Newt Gingrich was somewhere with his ugly wife hiding. Crackers were afraid that two million black men were going to take the Congress building, afraid that we were going to paint the White House black and then burn it to the ground, afraid that two million black men would no longer ask for Brother Mumia to be free, but would bum rush the goddamn jailhouse and take Mumia, take Geronimo Pratt, take all political prisoners from this goddamn no good, low down bastard, the white man. I will never seek unity with the white man. No good bastard. This doesn't work, baby. And so tonight, we will cover a few things. I want to cover them with balance. There were many who argued with Malcolm. History is best qualified to reward our research. There were many who debated with Malcolm criticized Malcolm even for loving the Honorable Elijah Muhammad so much. They called him foolish in his latter days. And I have heard in brothers say, including Jackie Robinson, you the home run with that one. 
I have heard Brother Charles Kenyatta say that on that day of February 21st, Sunday afternoon in the Audubon Auditorium, when Malcolm was taken from us, that if the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would have bought, walked into the back of the auditorium, even that late, and said, Malcolm, come on and go with me, that Malcolm would have no doubt walked off the stage and walked down the aisle to go with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I cannot lie to you that if Minister Farrakhan walked through that door tonight and said, Khalid, come on and go with me, that I would not walk off of this stage and walk down the aisle with him. I don't understand what it is, but it is something that bonds, that even binds and cements, in a sense, spiritually the one who stands in this place in history at whatever time to the leader, the teacher and guide of that day. Malcolm had come to a crossroads in his life but his love for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad remained strong. Even though there were moments when he lashed out in pain he was hurt, but his love remained strong and I'm sure he thought it over and changed his mind many times. I can find very little to criticize with the Million Man March. I stood among the millions of black men something with the devil. The devil said 400,000. Now you know I can't seek any kind of unity with a liar who will lie and tell such a big, bold, bald-faced peckerwood lie. We saw Sergeant Stacy Coon. We saw Brasino. We saw the four main crackers and all of them around Brother Rodney King and beat him and stomp him within an inch of his life. We all witnessed it. But a California jury in the California criminal, criminal justice system found four white men innocent when the whole world was a witness to what has happened. Somehow they just didn't see it, Attorney Maddox, the way we see it. That's why you don't want an Attorney Alton Maddox in the courtroom. Because he sees it from a perspective that others don't see it from. And he sees the devil from whence the devil can see him not. And there are certain things that he just doesn't expect from the devil. And when you go in not expecting certain things from the devil, then you can get whatever it is that you need to get. Because then it means that you're going to do whatever you need to do in order to get whatever it is you need to get. And you're not going to be expecting the devil to give you a break. It's not in his nature. Break your neck. Break your back, break your spirit, break his word, but he's not going to give you a break. They just didn't see it the same way we saw it in the Rodney King case. Soon, do ja, ju, do, or whatever the Korean woman's name, soon ja, do. shot our baby, our young princess, Latasha Hollins, shot her down in cold blood over orange juice. On camera, the whole world looked at it on camera and saw her shoot her at point blank range.
orange juice. But an old hook-nosed, bagel-eating, lox-eating, perpetrating the fraud just crawled out of the caves and hills of Europe, so-called wannabe Jew named Judge Carlin, a white woman Jew, gave the Korean woman probation, community service for killing a black girl in cold blood, even though we saw it on the screen, somehow we didn't see it the same way they saw it. Somehow they didn't see it the same way we saw it. There's something different about these two people. We saw Minister Farrakhan in an hour and in a moment of glory the ancestors present, their spirit, the spirit of the Egungun, abounding and filling the atmosphere. But they saw a message and a magnificent and marvelous movement, but they wanted to separate it from the one who was bringing the message. Look at it. We saw 1.5, some say 2 million. They saw 400,000. We saw O.J. Simpson not guilty. They saw him guilty. There's something different about the two people. Something very different about the two people. I want you to hear me here tonight, but I want you to hear me and hear me well. I don't believe that it's necessary to have to make a choice between those who are the agitators and those who are the diplomats and the negotiators. The agitators and the negotiators should be working together. When it comes to the white man, I'm not a negotiator. When it comes to the white man, I'm an irritator, I'm an agitator. <laughs> Whatever he does, I say, too little, cracker, too late. You didn't do enough. Well, gee whiz, shut up. The Pope apologized. That's not enough. Did he pay reparations? Did he raise up his dress and let us see them altar boys hiding under there? He's not the Pope of Rome, he's the Pope of Rome. Get me to respect some pervert, some pedophile, some freak. Black people running over each other in Africa, crushing each other on the ground, trampling each other to kiss this cracker's ring. Should kick him in his behind and drive him back to Italy, to the Vatican some damn way, to the caves and hills of Europe. Why do I talk like this? Because this is an idol God. This is a false god in your mind, black man, in your mind, black woman, and someone must snatch the idol god down and crush and crumble the idol in your mind and in your heart. The battle is for the minds and hearts of our people. I can't let you love some cracker. I'm not going to play pity pat with you over that. I'm not going to compromise with anybody over that. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad taught me and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan taught me that the Pope of Rome is the Antichrist. He's one of the arch devils. That he's at the root of this false world religious system. That is the very backbone of the false world political system. And I'm going to tiptoe through the tulips because he's the Pope, you shouldn't insult the Pope. So many people love the Pope. The hell with the Pope. 
And that's exactly where the cracker is going. He proved to you that he wasn't a damn pope. But the very Bible says pope, papa, father is a name that no one should use in the, relig in the re religious and the spiritual realm. In the religious and the spiritual realm, the Bible said no one should use the name father. But he calls himself the papa, the pope, the father. Revelation 13 and 18 says, here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six. That his number would be six, six, six. Over 666 different denominations in Christianity. And there are 66 books in this Bible. You got so many Bibles. Some got 66 books. Some got 72 books. Some got 73 books. Some got 18 books that were taken out. Some are called the hidden books of the Bible. Some are called the Apocrypha. Some are called the lost books of the Bible. Well, hell, who hid them? Who lost them? Who's tampering with the book? 66 books in the Bible. 666 different denominations in Christianity. And the Pope wears the hedge crown of ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt. <laughs> Brother Sundiata and I were talking about it. He also carries the was scepter of the high priest of Kemet. Masquerading. Perpetrating. Lying, shaking and faking. Not only that, he wears another mitre or tiara that has written on it in Latin, the vicar of Christ. But when you add it up in Roman numerals, it adds up to 666. Six, six. 666. And he wears it. When they walk into the Vatican, they bow down and kiss the feet of a blue-black St. Peter. Kiss a blue-black St. Peter's feet so much until they've worn the imprint of his toes out. When the old no-good cracker got shot, he wasn't anxious to go to no heaven up in the sky. That show you that's a big lie. And damn it, you the vicar of Christ. You're the right hand of God. You're anxious to get out of here. Somebody shot you, you want them to be blessed. You tell them, don't take him to jail. I'm going on to God. But they got the best doctors in the world for that cracker. Soon as the doctors arrived, when the ambulance rolled up, if he was the real right hand of God, he would have said, I don't know, doctor. Get us up with me. I'm going on to the right hand. That cracker said, take me to the hospital. Because as the old folks say, so everybody talking about help me ain't going there. Help him. Help him. That cracker knew he wasn't going nowhere. Biggest lie in the world. So the Pope and the Catholic Church have lied for all of these years. The Pope sanctioned slavery. The Pope blessed the slave ships. The Pope prayed over the cargo as our great great grandparents, I don't know which great it was, hell all of them were great. <laughs> prayed over the cargo, human cargo. The chosen of God prayed over the cargo. The Pope gave his blessings to our enslavement. The Catholic Church was made rich on the backs of the slaves. And I'm going to respect him. So the Catholic Church and the Jews, you're not supposed to talk about either one of them when they both have been, been involved in the African Holocaust, both involved in the genocide of the black man, woman, and child. No good bastards, the Jews, so-called Jews, we were saying at the... Black Holocaust Nationhood Conference, they always complaining and whining. You say, Hachoo! 
and they think you said. Say, damn fool, I was just sneezing. No, no, you said a Jew. And tried to cover up your mouth. I just said a chew. Let's deal with some of this. Some of you have been stopping me and talking to me, but you're not like Attorney Alton Maddox. You don't have the heart that he has. Some of you don't have the strength that he has. You don't have the faith and the confidence that he has. Oh, it's true. You'll come to me in private, but in a forum like this, or on CNN or C-SPAN, you won't stand up and speak to the world. So I want to address some of the things that you've been coming to me with, with balance, with balance. Some of you say, well, I didn't like what Farrakhan said at the Million Man March. What did he mean when he said, we didn't come here to bash people. We didn't come here to talk about people. We came here to accept our responsibility to make atonement and accept our responsibility and to help this country, to help America in words. You phrased it, different ones of you phrased it different ways to become, to move toward a more perfect union. You said, what is he talking about? Help America move toward a more perfect union. Now that question, I don't know. You'll have to ask him. I can't answer that one. Until I ask him, I can't answer that one. Some of you have come to me and asked me, say, when he said that um, we were not in Washington, D.C. to tear America down, but we were there to rebuild America, to rebuild the wasted city. What did he mean by that? I don't know. You have to ask him. Don't ask me. Creating a burden for me. Hell, I don't know the answer. If I knew it, I would tell you as God is my witness. I don't understand it. And I have to ask. And once I get the answer, I will by God's grace share it with you. Some of you say, well, what is this about him saying he want to meet with the Jews? That he's, he doesn't like the trouble that's been going on between him and the Jews. That he wants to dialogue with the Jews. I can answer that one. Brothers say, that's weak. You're entitled to your opinion. But I think I can answer that. Even though he didn't ask me to answer it for him. I believe I can answer that. Let's look at it. All heads of state and government meet with their enemy. Huh? Generals meet with opposing generals. Is that right? If you're not in the political world, let's go in the Bible. The Bible said the sons of God came together, but Satan was there also in the midst of them. And the sons of God and Satan had a meeting. And the sons of God put questions to Satan. They asked Satan, where are you coming from, Satan? Oh, crack, I say, coming from to and fro and up and down. To and fro, to and fro and up and down in the earth. That's what the book said. This is the sons of God talking to who? Satan. Is that right? Another scripture says that Jesus met with the devil where? Up on a high mountain. Is that right? And Jesus and the devil had a conversation. And the devil said, yo. Look here, Jesus. He said, look here, my man. You see all that out there? He said, yo. I'm the God of this wicked world. He said, I'll give you all of this if you'll come and bow down to me. And Jesus said unto him, 
Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, Satan. But this is Jesus meeting on a mountain with the devil. And the devil trying to tempt Jesus. Another scripture teaches us that Elijah, in the book of Kings, met with the false prophets of Baal in the wicked land controlled by Ahab. He met with the false prophets of Baal. He dialogued with them. He debated with them. He even dueled with them and defeated them. But he met with them. You say, well, I don't go by the Bible. Alhamdulillah. I go by the Holy Quran. Aloudu billahi min shaitan nirajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. If you can't show me in the Quran or in the history of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or where somewhere Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sanctioned it, I can't deal with the Bible. Well, let's deal with the Holy Quran. We are taught that Prophet Muhammad met with the wicked rulers of the Quraysh tribe and signed a major document that laid the base for the freedom in that whole land of his people at the truce of Hudabiah. At the truce of Hudabiah, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, had to sit down with his enemies. And they weren't even the head enemies. They sent lower-ranked enemies to insult him even further. And as they were writing in the document, he had messenger of Allah in the document. And they said, look, if we thought you were the messenger of Allah, we wouldn't even be having this meeting. You ain't no messenger of Allah. We're not going to sign a document with you. And you got some messenger of Allah in there. But because Muhammad wanted to settle the differences, and Muhammad wanted to lay the base for victory later on, Muhammad scratched out messenger of Allah and submitted in that moment. Sun Tzu says in the art of war that you make a noise in the east and strike in the west. That when the enemy is strong, you are pretending sometimes to be weak and to retreat. But when the enemy appears to be weak or when the enemy is asleep, you advance and attack and take the enemy out. That's the art of war. I don't know why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said that he wanted to meet with the Jews or dialogue with the Jews or end the problems with the Jews or heal the wounds, in words. And you've said it just about every way to me. I really don't know why. But these are logical explanations. Holy Quran says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had to deal with Iblis. Where Iblis said to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Holy Quran that I will lie in wait for them. I will go out before them and behind them and from their left and from their right. I will even lie in wait for them in thy straight path in our mustaqim. And you will not find any of them worthy. And so Allah and the devil dialogue, deal back and forth over God's people as Iblis is trying to contend with the God. To me, I think if he wants to meet with the Jews, that's his business. Any man who can call two million black people together in Washington, D.C. deserves the benefit of the doubt on a meeting with a handful of crackers in a room. You still defending him the way they did you and the way they doing you? How come you didn't speak at the Million Man March? I don't know. You got to ask him. We were waiting for you. I know that some of you were. I knew I wasn't going to speak. I knew I wasn't going to speak at no Million Man March. 
I knew I was. And something else has just come to my attention as I look around me in the room tonight. There's no FOI security. But that's a sign of something. What was his name? Lee or whoever it was? Fong or one of them in the OJ trial. He kept saying something's wrong. When, we, when I spoke at the Black Holocaust and Nationhood Conference with Attorney Alton Maddox, yes, and they cut me off on C-SPAN, I noticed one thing. The FOI was obviously and conspicuously absent. I was alone. I didn't realize it, and that shows you how much I'm feeding on that kind of thing. I really, there were so many brothers around me you had Black Panthers around me, Black Panther militia. You, you had uh, um, brothers from the Black Think Tank in, in Houston. You had brothers from Dallas, Texas, from a whole martial arts school. You had brothers from New York. You had brothers from several. I mean, you had this uh, group of security men from all over that were there. And I didn't really realize, and from D.C., that the FOI was not present until a whole day later. But tonight, I realize that they're not here. I don't know, I don't know what I've done um, except speak the truth. And I'm going to continue to do that. I understand all the way up to October 16th, I haven't said a word about Ben Chavis. But then I read and I see Ben Chavis. I'm not sure whether he said it or not because the white man does lie. But I look and see Ben Chavis. Well, uh, we did see him once. Where he said that the Black Holocaust Nationhood Conference was not an official Million Man March event. We thought we, were, we thought we were too legit to quit. We thought we were legit. And he said that the staff, in words, my words, the coordinators of the Million Man March would not be present. All of a sudden, at the last minute, Dr. Maulana Karenga, who did the statement of purpose, or I can't think what they actually call it, the mission statement. I heard him on LIB today. This is one of my teachers. This is a man that I love and honor and look up to. This is a man who I have defended all over the hells of North America. When they try to put a snitch jacket on him, when they try to say that he's the police, when even some of our top scholars and elders have come out against him and say that he's not one to be trusted, I have stayed up all night long in some cities where the people love me and I'm fighting and debating for him. But at the last minute, Dr. Maulana Karenga didn't show up for the Black Holocaust and Nationhood Conference. Question, was he told that if he showed up there, he couldn't speak the next day at the Million Man March? I don't know. You have to ask him that, but somebody asked me that question. I'm not up here faking. I'm raising questions that you're bringing to me. Some of those questions, you know, uh, Maulana, call him and ask him yourself. I intend to ask him. Was it told that he couldn't be there? Reverend Al Sharpton, even though I had sat with him and even though we had talked about the Black Holocaust Nationhood Conference, he did have some scheduling conflicts during the day. And he had a speaking engagement at 5.30 in the evening. But he was told that it might go on as late, and it did go on until... I don't know, 9, 10 o'clock at night, maybe later. He, was, he had said that he would be there no matter what. I was to do the keynote that night. But we had said, brother, even if you come late, even though it's planned for me to end, to be the last voice that night, there's no way on earth we can dish you if you can't get there during the time slot when you're supposed to speak. Come on, brother. For some reason, he spoke to Attorney Maddox, 
and told him he was coming, told him that he was coming. He spoke to the coordinator, Dr. Malik Zulu Shabazz, and who did and, and set up many of the major rallies in that area. And he didn't get an opportunity to represent the youth on Monday because they felt that Malik Zulu Shabazz was too radical and that he would get up there and say something that was not acceptable. Well, I can accept that. I can accept that. But my question is, and I'll have to call Reverend Sharpton and ask him, what happened? Were you told that if you came to the Holocaust Conference that you wouldn't be able to speak the next day at the Million Man March? Well, Jesse wasn't invited to the Holocaust Conference. Jesse is an example of the Holocaust. I have no reason to ease up on these niggas. If October 16th was a day of atonement, Jesse Jackson has yet to ever even try to seek any kind of dialogue with me. But the punk is going to sit with a peck of wood, with a goddamn Jew, but he won't sit with his brother. He wouldn't even take a picture with me in West Africa, in Senegal, because I was beating the hell out of him for turning on the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan over and over and over again. And every time I heard the nigga come on TV, even leading up to the Million Man March, every time they ask him a question about Minister Farrakhan or something he allegedly had said, he would still say, even though he said he supported the Million Man March, he'd say, well, Farrakhan, that's, that's racist. That's anti-Semitic. Yeah, I mean, he was... He was Vintage Jesse, flip-flop, messy Jesse, Ben Chavis, he might have atoned with God, but I don't know that he went through them eight steps of atonement. I'm not sure he did. He's never sat down with me. I hugged him after the dinner table, after we, after we had sat at the dinner table some months back, a month, couple of months back, and said, brother, we need to talk. I have some things that I need to say to you. He said, and I have some things that I need to say to you. We have made no atonement. He bragged. I was the first, one of the first, or the first, to go to Minister Farrakhan and tell him that he had to do something about Khalid Muhammad. Well, nigga, who are you? Stealing your people's money. You over the people's money. You are trusted by the NAACP. And you are stealing your own poor people's money. Shit. Saw them dollars up in the air. I said, don't let Ben Chavis near him. Damn it, I want to be on the team. I wanted to be with them. I wasn't invited. It's bigger than me. Much bigger than me. And so much beauty in it. Until in one sense it was all right, but in another sense I can't accept the BS. If you can meet with white folks, why can't you meet with me? If you, Jesse Jackson, can go out and talk about how he's going to try to organize this and that among our enemies, there has to be a place in the Million Man March for the irritators, for the agitators, for the freedom fighters, for the revolutionaries, for those who are uncompromising with the white man. There must be a place. If it's a million man march and every religion, that's the way I've preached it in almost 27 cities. 
preach myself hoarse for the million man march. If every preacher, every denomination, every religion, every ideology, every doctrine, every philosophy is supposed to be present, then why can't the revolutionaries be present? It's the revolutionaries who make a way and help the diplomats and the divine negotiators and the divine diplomats. Huh? They help. We're supposed to have a black united front, an African united front. I ask anybody that the question is to go to, what in the hell did Khalid do? You mean some little damn speech at Keene College has me ostracized by my Brothers, don't make no sense to me. No sense to me. The great Carlos Cook, the great Carlos Cook, wonderful disciple of the Honorable Marcus Mosiah Garvey, he said, I don't know nothing that a black man could say about a white man that would cause two black men to fall out. I don't know nothing. I know it's anything. I don't know nothing that a black man could say about a white man that would cause two black men to fall out. The radicals, the agitators, the revolutionaries, the uncompromising, the militant, they drive the enemy to the table. They force the enemy to the table. I didn't want you to hear the rest of CNN or C-SPAN at the Black uh, Holocaust and Nationhood Conference because I end saying tomorrow you better listen to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You better listen to him and you better hear him because there's a new generation coming up out here. And there are many others of us out here that if a few million are there tomorrow, if you refuse to listen to him, Millions will return one day with our God and our guns, and it'll be a whole different day in Washington, D.C. A whole different day in Washington, D.C. I want to cover a few things. What the Muslims want and what the Muslims believe. This is what governs my life. We want freedom. We want a full and complete freedom. We want justice, equal justice under the law. We want justice applied equally to all, regardless of creed or class or color. I'm making the mission statement at the United African Movement meeting at the Slave Theater. This is my mission statement to you here tonight. We want equality of opportunity. We want equal membership in society with the best in civilized society. We want our people in America who are, whose parents or grandparents were the descendants from slaves to be allowed to establish a separate state or territory of their own, either on this continent or elsewhere. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to provide such land reparations is what we're talking about and that the area must be fertile and minerally rich. We believe that our former slave masters are obligated to maintain and supply our needs in this separate ter territory for the next 20 to 25 years until we are able to produce and supply our own needs. That's, that's, those are terms of reparations to help repair the damage. We want, uh, since we cannot get along with them in peace, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? Since we cannot get along with them in peace, what? Since we cannot get along with them in peace and equality, after giving them 400 years of our sweat and blood and receiving in return some of the worst treatment human beings have ever experienced, we believe our contribution to this land and the suffering forced upon us by white America justifies our demand for complete separation 
in a state or territory of our own. Let's stop for a moment. Some of you say, well, I don't know about that. A state or territory of our own? Where else are we going to get TVs? Are they going to have washing machines? Dryers? Cinema? And cinnamon? Wheaties and Cheerios and Fruit Loops? Will there be white women there for us to chase? You better drink you a glass of OJ and go out and cut you a cracker's throat. When the revolution comes. When the revolution comes, <laughs> as the last poets would say, a state or territory of our own. We want freedom for all believers of Islam now held in federal prisons. Why did he say believers of Islam? He means believers in a system of righteousness. Those who want to live according to the word of God and the law of God. Those who want to live according to righteousness if they have accepted this way of righteousness, even though they are incarcerated, let them go. Let them go. Go and contact Judge Bruce, Luke, uh, Bruce Wright and tell him to help us to get them out of there. They call him Cut Them Judge, Cut Them Loose Bruce. That's what they call him. Or whoever can help us to get them out of there. But he goes on to say, we want freedom for all who... What did he say? All. Come on, you're not scared to say all, are you? Want freedom for whom? All. Hey. You in the house. For all black men and women now under death sentence in innumerable prisons in the north as well as in the south. This is a statement dealing with our political prisoners. This is a statement dealing with all black prisoners and people of color of the black family who own death row. Is that what it is? This is speaking to Mumia and, and others long before the rest of the masses of our people even move to this plane of consciousness. We want every black man and woman to have the freedom to accept or reject being separated from the slave master's children and establish a land of their own. Let me go to mess. That's Muhammad speaks, and that's the final call newspaper. But let me see if I can find in message to the black man one of the most powerful and profound statements that I have ever heard, where he says here in the uh, message to the black man that it is better here it is page 204 separation independence what is it called integration is disintegration the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said separation is the only solution Malcolm told us that it's like a cup of black, hot, strong coffee. You integrate it with white cream, where it used to be black, it now becomes whitened. It used to be hot, it now becomes cold. It used to keep you, used to be keeping you awake, now to put you to sleep. It used to be strong, it now becomes weak. Used to keep you awake, now it puts you to sleep. It loses its blackness, it loses its strength, it loses its power to keep you awake, and it puts you to sleep because you integrate it with some white cream and some white sugar. On 203, separation and independence, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad says it is 
the right time that we seek separation and independence for our nation from the evils of our open enemies and not the foolish things other organizations are doing. They want our people integrated into our open enemies to be destroyed as a people. He goes on to say, it is far more important to teach separation of the blacks and whites in America than prayer. Did you hear what he said? Did you hear what he said? He said it is far more important to teach separation of blacks from whites than it is to teach prayer. What did he mean? Oh, it's deep. He meant that you are righteous by nature, black woman. He meant that you are righteous by nature, black man. He meant that when you are left alone to be yourself, that you are by nature in tune with the divine, universal, and cosmological rhythm and vibration of the almighty, all-wise God and creator. And if you can just be separated from the devil, be separated from the evil of your enemy, the adversary of God and the righteous, that prayer emanates from your very soul. It flows from your being naturally. So it is more important, I think he said, far more important. What was that, 204? 203 and 204. Yeah, he did. He said it is far more important because he had looked right into your nature as he was taught by the great Mahdi, Master Farad Muhammad. He had looked into your nature and found that you are the original people of the planet Earth, that you are the first people in the light of the sun, that you are made in the image of God and after God's likeness, that when you see you, you're looking at God. Because you are in the Father and the Father is in you. And in some cases we got to say the Father, Mother, because man and woman are twin halves of the same divine essence. It is far more important to teach separation than to teach prayer because you got to get God's people away from the devil. you got to get God's children out from under a surrogate wicked father who is Satan, the devil himself. He taught us to lie the way we lie today. You say, well, what about the history of Yakub teaching them tricks and lies and devilish men? Now it is the very nature of the white man. It is locked in the very fabric and fiber of the white man's being. Back to a simple thing. Is the whole world looking at over a million for sure? They came up with the system. They had one sister that came on that worked for some a governmental agency. She smoked them. She put a chart up with lights and stuff. She said, we have this set up according to some grid system. And the architects have already determined how many people can stand per square foot in this area. Up to this area is a hundred and something thousand. Up to this area is so and so, so and so hundred thousand. Up to such and such an area is so many, so many hundred thousand. She said by noon they had oh well over four hundred thousand. She said now let's move up to this section. And then she covered that, and she showed you people in that section. Then she said, now let's move up to this section. She said, no, don't stop there. Now let's go down this street. Up to that point, up to that point, up to that point. Now we got to go down this street. Up to this point, up to this point, up to this point. It is better, far better, to teach separation than prayer, because if you're left alone, your every heart beats. If you're left alone, once you are yourself again, your every pulse beat, your every heart beat is a prayer in honor and glorification to the almighty and all wise God. But we must get you away from your slave master. For your slave master is the arch deceiver. 
He's a tempter. He's the master of trichnology. We don't just call the white man the devil for some nickname to be name calling. He would rather you call him the cracker. He would rather you call him the peckerwood. He would rather you call him Chuck and the hunky and all them other names. You call a white man the devil, they shoot him. We're talking about the nature of white people. Brothers and sisters, as I near my conclusion, if you watch a thing at every time frame in history and you find them doing the same thing at every time frame in history, that means generation after generation, then that means that they cannot change. They couldn't change if they wanted to change. They are coded that way. You can sit down and make a deal with Bill Clinton. The white man will give you something with his right hand and turn around and take it back from you with his left hand. He will give you a voting rights bill. You can fight and march and sweat and die and face tanks in the streets and get vicious four-legged dogs sicked on you by cold-blooded, vicious, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, two-legged dogs in the streets. You can be dragged down the streets by cattle prods. Your women can have their breasts ripped off by police dogs. You can be thrown in jails and jail doors slammed in your face fighting for voting rights. He'll make you fight like hell for a long time and give you your voting rights with one hand. And before your children can even have a baby that's two years old, He'll take it back with his left hand. He'll give you a civil rights bill. One day he's one way and another day he's another way. He's the devil. History is best qualified to reward our research. Separation is the only solution. Black nationalism, a nation of our own, some of this land that we can call our own, our own flag, our own government, our own God. That's all. We don't need a white house. God damn it, we need a black house. That's what we need. We need a black house. Bad name. Silly nigger, stupid nigger, dumb nigger, the white man's nigger, only nigger on the team, second string nigger, nigger was on the B team, second string, that ugly Marsha Clark, the devil in a, devil in a new dress. She was the captain of the team. And when that's what I heard, a nigga like that, she could have him. No, I love our sisters. I love the black woman. I don't want some sister to get hung up with a nigga like Christopher Darden and accidentally have a baby and the baby come out as sorry as that nigga. When they lost the case, Marsha Clark took it like a man. Don't stand so close, baby. <laughs> Marsha took it like a man. The chief prosecutor, what was his name? The head man. Garcetti. Took it strongly. All of them took it strong. This faggot broke down and stuck right. <sighs> Gotta let this nigga go, boss. I let you down, boss. I tried to run the nigga down like we used to do on the plantation, boss. I tried to catch the nigga and hold the nigga for 
for you so you can lynch the nigga, boss. I'm sorry I let you down, boss. God damn it. Hell with these niggas. Stand up, black man. Stand up, black woman. Don't bow down to the white man. Separation is the only solution. A nation of your own. What they used to do on the plantation. That's the only reason the nigga was on the team. Because they knew race was the issue. They were accusing a nigga of killing a white woman and a white man. And as far as they were concerned, raping the white woman. That's why spousal abuse is so important, Attorney Maddox. Being around you gives me that, that uh, uh, so-called law or uh, legal insight into the criminal, criminal justice system. So he can look right in and see something that you miss. They felt like he had raped her. That's right. That's why they playing up the spousal abuse thing so much. That's why they playing up the domestic violence thing so much. They're trying to say, this is not one of our women that we just lost to the nigga. The nigga was beating her. The nigga was dogging her. He was raping her. We, we didn't lose her. It was force. Because I'm mighty whitey. And any white woman would rather be with me. Cracker there in Washington, D.C. got a big old long, tall Washington monument. White. Sticking up in the air. Now, we have found out from Dr. Ben... We found out from Dr. Ben and Dr. Clark. We found out for, from, uh, he's doctor, Dr. Ashra Kwesi and Dr. Jeffries and Dr. Uh, uh, Patricia uh, Nana uh, Okosawa Sekmet and Dr. Balefi Asante and others and uh, Dr. Tony Browder and Dr. Steve Coakley and others. We found out that it represents the male reproductive and regenerative organ, the penis of Osar, called by the Greeks Osiris. Now this cracker, that's black man. You see in the Medunetta and look on the walls, you see them with a strong black erection. And they got some white thing sticking up. George Washington never had an erection like that. This is a joke. Give me a break. Only the white man's ego could carry a lie like that. Only his ego. I see why I didn't speak October the 16th. Because <laughs> I would have had to point down there and say that that's the biggest joke of all. Is George Wash? That's supposed to represent George Wash. Martha ain't never had it that good. <laughs> oh Lord, have mercy! <laughs> I want to form a Black United Front with attorney Alton Maddox and Steve Coakley and Leonard Jeffries and Tony Martin and uh, all the radicals, all the radicals, uncompromising. We need a black leadership summit. All the radicals, Malik Zulu Shabazz, Dr. Malik Zulu Shabazz, all the radicals. And then we issue our mission statement. Then we go and seek dialogue with our brothers who are over there, because we're supposed to be together. Like a football game. You're supposed to have an inside game and an outside game. Uh, you're supposed to have those that just dig in and grind three yards in a cloud of dust. Huh? No fancy footwork. I damn it, the enemy get in the way, just duck their head in their helmet and run dead over him and step all in his damn chest. 
Huh? Then you got the fancy boys, you know. Now you see it, now you don't, the in around and all of that. Let Jesse run that play. But I'm telling you now, if you get a ball to Ben Chavis, he's going to fumble. <laughs> Damn it, if you don't respect me, I don't respect you. Not going to lie down. You shoot me down, God damn it, I'm back up in your face. And if I know who shot the shot, I'm killing your behind. Assassination case. Ain't come to court yet. Still ain't come to court. Some got away, they say. One is still in custody. Ain't got to court yet. Don't even hear nothing about it. Don't even hear nothing about it. Let me finish this up. Let me finish this up. We know that the above plan for the solution of the black and white conflict is the best and only answer to the problem between the two people. I was taught that Elijah Muhammad's mouth was not made to speak idle words. That's what I was taught. You're not going to teach me that one day. And then I turn around another day and I have to believe something different. I really believe in this. I'm not faking I'm willing to die on it, and I'm willing to kill on it, and the white man can see that. Oh, crackers don't run up to me. I walk by myself. I go everywhere by myself. A lot of you claim, I, I, I'm with you, brother. I don't never see you. My son here say, I got your back. <laughs> They don't want to walk with me. How many do you hear, like Alton Maddox, say, I'm with him? Very few. He shows. I believe you, brother. I know I'm by myself. Me and God. God, people say, you don't have no security? I say, God is sufficient. I don't miss going nowhere I want to go. What they say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Huh? Thy rod, thy staff, comforted me. Prepares a table for me in the presence, in the midst of my name. Making me to lie down in green pastures. You know what that means? Green pastures. <laughs> Look out. <laughs> huh? Beside the still waters and stuff. I've been here before. He criticized me for driving a Rolls Royce. That's part of the green pastures, fool. <laughs> you know, I don't have to die a broke revolutionary. All our revolutionaries die broke. Some other things I have to get straight so I don't have the fate that the others you die and ain't got no money to bury you. Our greats die like that. It's true. It's true. Why you gotta have a Rolls Royce? I paid for it myself. I ain't robbed nobody. I didn't steal from the NAACP. No, but when I go through the projects, 
When I ride through the reservation, brother's all right. I got him. He cool. Brother, you all right? You cool? Just let me finish this lecture tonight. Another night. And I mean, meaning you can stay, but I mean, you got to speak another night. I'm the speaker tonight. We love you. What's your name, man? Stand up, black man. Get this black man a hand. Brother Eugene, give him a black hand. He's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Yeah, he's all right. He's all right. All right, brother. Give him a better hand than that. Give him a better hand than that. Now, brother Eugene, take your seat, man. Let him get back in there to his seat. He's the next row. He's the next row. That's our brother, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's our brother. When I go through the projects, when I go through the reservation, when I pass the clockers on the street corner and the clockers on the benches giving their signals, selling their dope and dropping their drugs, Got their little BMWs, little Beamers, with the little package on it. And it depends on which one of the Rolls Royces I come through in. I come through in the black one, or I come through in the old white one. And I tell them, look, put your Beamer in my trunk and come on and ride with me and let's talk, brother. Pass prostitutes and talk to them. Their pimp got them out on the corner disrespecting them over monies, trinkets, and goodies. The battle is for the minds and hearts of our people. The prostitute will listen to a man who rolls up in a Rolls Royce and ain't buying nothing. It's not weak enough to buy. I don't respect a man who will patronize a prostitute. I have never respected a man who will patronize a prostitute. You got to really know what you're saying and mean what you say when you say it in an audience like this. Because a sister will stand up in the back and say, well, wait a minute. I remember you. You must didn't expect me to be here tonight. You got to live this stuff. You can't just talk it. I believe this. I live it. I can never respect a man who patronizes a prostitute. It's a weak man. Sorry, man. You mean you can't relate to a sister no better than that? As the brothers say, you ain't got no more conversation than that? Huh? Come on. When you go through, the young brothers who are out there selling dope so they can get diamond rings and wear some little flashy something and have little funny looking cars and stuff. And you go through there, you're riding better than them. Your jewelry is better than theirs. Your conversation is better than theirs. You coming from supreme wisdom. They can't out you. They can't out-rap you. They're not out-riding you. They're not out-dressing you. They're not out flashing you. You come with supreme wisdom. And you ain't selling no dope, ain't buying. You got their attention. They said, damn, man, that's so-and-so, so-and-so. They be coming through. Who is that in that road? Man, look at that road. Bro. When you stop and get out, they all come around. Hey, man, what's up? They want to talk. I did it when I was walking, though. No car. But it's harder that way. <laughs> they say, if your God ain't done no more for you than that, I don't want to have nothing to do with your God. Because yo, my man, you walk it. <laughs> Look like your God would at least give you a ride. <laughs> so what I'm saying is I use these things as a revolutionary as a righteous man of God would use them. I call it my urban gorilla tank. Huh? 
I wear the camouflage clothes of the street sometimes. So that when I go out in the jungle, in the concrete jungle, I can relate to those living an animal savage beast life. And I can help by the grace of God and the wisdom and teachings of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan to lift them up from a dead level to a living perpendicular and stand black men and women up on the square. It's appearance. It's using things without letting the things use you. It's not what you use, but how you use what you use. And as Rev. Mike would say, you can't lose with the stuff I use. <laughs> well, Ike is on time and on many points. Let's finish this up. We want an immediate end to police brutality and mob attacks against the so-called Negro throughout the United States. We believe that the federal government should intercede to see the black men and women tried in white courts receive justice in accordance with the laws of the land or allow us to build a new nation for ourselves dedicated to justice, freedom, and liberty. As long as we are not allowed to establish a state or territory of our own, we demand not only equal justice under the laws of the United States, but equal employment opportunities now. We do not believe that after 400 years of free or nearly free labor, sweat and blood, which has helped America become rich and powerful, that so many thousands of black people should have to subsist on relief, charity, or live in poor houses. We want the government of the United States to exempt our people from all taxation as long as we are deprived of equal justice under the laws of the land. In another section of what the Muslims believe, he says here, we believe that the offer of integration is hypocritical and is made by those who are trying to deceive the black people into believing that their 400 year old open enemies of freedom, justice and equality are all of a sudden their friends. Furthermore, we believe that such deception is intended to prevent black people from realizing that the time, this is the time in history, that the time in history has arrived for the separation from the whites of this nation. If the white people are truthful about their professed friendship toward the so-called Negro, they can prove it by dividing up America with their slaves. We do not believe that America will ever be able to furnish enough jobs for her own millions of unemployed in addition to jobs for the 20 million or more, I add, black people as well. Brothers and sisters, this is a powerful mission statement to be made here at the United African Movement meeting at the Slave Theater in Brooklyn, New York. Do I disagree with the mission statement that I heard Dr. Maulana Karanga read today? No, I thought it had some very powerful and positive points. But as a revolutionary, as a freedom fighter, as a Pan-African nationalist, as one who is uncompromising with the devil, this one is equally as suitable for me and somehow should be incorporated, but though we find some of the points in different language are represented, I like the hard approach of this one. There's nothing wrong with that. In a nation, you have different mindsets, different schools of thought, different feelings, different flavors, different ideologies. That's in a nation. And the harder it is, the stronger it is, the more meaningful and impacting I believe that it will be on our enemy and crushing our enemy and waking our people up. So I wanted to share these things with you. Now, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, some of you say, well, he mentioned on Larry King Live, I think, that one of the books of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad talked about an accord or some kind of alliance or accord with the Jews. It's in, message, it's in How to Eat to Live, book two, page 89. 
Some of you were arguing with me on 125th Street today and said it didn't exist. But it does, but it has some very interesting language to it. Page 89. But yes, among the three parties now, Muslims, Jews, and Christians, and a fourth party, Hindus, a great conflict arises and is going to reach, is growing to reach a bitter end if wisdom is not found to curb it. But the American Jew and the American black man may yet find some way of making a separate relationship out of the other world. He says they may yet find a way of making a what? A what? A what? A what? A separate relationship out of the other world. Page 89, book 2, How to Eat to Live. I won't read these other sections that I had here tonight, but I will read just one other. He says here, the only way for us to accept Allah is for us to, well, further down I will go. He said, accept and do my 12-point program. The white race is destroying itself and wishes you to take I in, an eye into its own destruction. Beware of their tricks as they are now playing them on you 100%. On page 182 of Message to the Black Man, page 172, put the Muslim program before Congress. He said, it is difficult for me to advise my followers on taking part in the corrupt politics of our enemies who are in complete control of political affairs. There are many black men and women who make splendid politicians. They could accomplish considerable good if they, like the white politician and his people, were given proper and equal recognition and justice for themselves and their people. If our politicians are to serve us, they must have no fear of the white man when they plead our case in white courts before white judges. The strongest politician of our kind or the person who comes nearest, as far as I know, to giving us political justice in the white courts, if he had our complete backing, is Congressman Adam Clayton Powell, Jr., though he is not a Muslim. A Muslim politician is what you need, but Congressman Powell is not afraid and would not be easily bribed, for he is not hungry. There are two other good politicians, but I will not mention them by name at this time. If they could shed their fear, they would have excellent political, they would make excellent political leaders to guard our interests. We must give good black politicians the total backing of our population. That's page 172 and 173. Put the Muslim program before America. Make sure to read page 177 on what is un-American. Make sure that you read in addition to that uh, page 222 of land and a nation. Page 226, separate and be saved. Page 228, we must have some earth and soon. 229, a nation of our own. 230, a nation within a nation. 232, for freedom, justice, and equality. And 234, our day is near at hand. I close saying to you that I know that the words that I have spoken here tonight and the meditation of my heart is acceptable. I believe in the sight of Almighty God. I believe that what I have said here tonight will be quite controversial, but I felt it necessary to say and to speak. I'm sincere.
I am most sincere. I'm a principled man, and I'm not one to just play with. Most times I don't even know what's happening and why it's happening and it just changes. I don't know why the FOI is not here tonight. It was all over the radio today. It was on LIB today. Was it on yesterday? RL. How many different ones? How did you hear about it? Yes, all over town. And here we have overflow capacity crowd here, all over outside into the other rooms and the other wing over there. And not one FOI is present. And some of you used to see me a few days ago on the streets and you'd run up to me, oh, I'm so glad you back with the nation. I never left the nation. I'm so glad, I was so glad that the nation was back with me. It's not in my heart to leave the nation. I met with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan after a year and a half of trying to meet with him. And I told him how much I love him and that I would rather be with him really than do anything out here. And that's the truth. But I don't understand what's happening and what's going on. So for those who have been on my case all day and on my phone with these questions for the past couple of days, I did the best to answer them tonight. And hopefully you will be just as supportive, supportive when I'm back out on the doorstep again <laughs> as you appear to be here tonight. Uh, we need to make this a stronger organization, the United African Movement. We need to stop treating it like church, just coming out Easter Sunday, Christmas, politically speaking, revolutionary speaking, uh, special occasions. We need to really get in and pump and build it. If we're going to buy our own theater and building, then we need to really get up and do that. If we're going to set up other businesses, we need to go on and get about the business of doing that. If we're going to set up the camp and make it a retreat and a place where we can go and study and get away from this winter as well as summer, then we need to do that. But it's on you. One of the main things that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said was join an organization. Join the organization of your choice. Brother Kwame Touré, formerly Stokely Carmichael, says if you can't find an organization that has something that you like, that suits you, then there's nothing wrong with all of these organizations. There's something wrong with us. There should be some organization you can join and dedicate yourself to. Don't just come out to hear a good speaker. You come here and get all the wisdom in the world, all of the knowledge. Some of us that are here tonight. Then what are you going to do with all that? You just go out and brag and go to your plantation, to your job, and drop a lot of science and have everybody at the job talking about, ooh, she show sure is heavy. He show sure is heavy. Dr. Maulana Karanga says that black is color, culture, and consciousness. And I have added color, culture, consciousness, and a corresponding cosmic connection. And we must also add commitment. Right. Means nothing without commitment. Color without commitment means nothing. Culture without commitment means nothing. Consciousness without commitment means nothing. We must take a stand. All of the black men who are here, how many went to Washington, D.C.? Let me see your hand. We pledged. Stand, black man. And those who pledged at home, who were not there, how many heard the pledge and pledged with us at home? If you saw it on TV or you heard it, we pledged that we would do better. 
We pledged that we would atone to each other, is that right? We pledged that we would come back to our communities, to our women, to our children, to our families, do better than we had ever done before. Didn't we pledge that? Then we should now make a decision, please be seated, that we're going to stand on our word and by our word. I thank you for being as attentive as you have been. I hope that something I have said is meaningful. And I hope that something I said, that you will find it to be of benefit, to raise us to a higher level of human and divine life, move our sisters from girls to women, and our brothers from boys to men but not only from boys to men, from boyhood to manhood, but from manhood to godhood. And not only from girlhood to womanhood, but to goddesshood. Thank you for listening, and may Allah bless you, and I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Hold your positions. I greet you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. Odabo. Hotep and Tuta Onana in Dugu Dada, please. I'm a runaway slave. Runaway slave. I'm a runaway slave.